Thank you for joining me today for another tutorial. I'm going to show you how to make this fun little heart artwork. And we are going to be using the blend tool, clipping masks, and the symbol sprayer tool. Let me begin by turning this off. I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to name it background, BG background. I'm going to click M to get my rectangle tool up and I'm going to create a beautiful little rectangle and I'm going to change the color to be a light gray. All right, I press V to get my selection tool back up. I am going to go in here, uh, select it on my background layer and create a sub layer. This is going to be my hearts. So I'm gonna lock my rectangle just so I don't mess it up. I'm gonna press L to pull up my ellipse tool. I'm gonna make one ellipse. I'm gonna make one right next to it. And let's go in and adjust the color of these to be white so we can see what's going on. I'm gonna pull up my pen tool using the hotkey P and I'm going to create just a little heart thing gonna go up I press a to get my direct selection tool up and I'm gonna just bring this over to that anchor point and I'm gonna bring this down to be the center of the heart I'm gonna do shift C to pull up my convert anchor point tool and I'm going to hold on to this anchor point push shift and drag down so I get a nice little curve there I'm gonna do the same on this side and as you can see, these handles are all weird. I'm going to use my convert anchor point tool and just click on those handles to delete them. And as you can see, we have a beautiful little heart. I'm going to select all of these and I'm going to go to my Pathfinder tool. If you don't have this window popped up, you can go to Window, Pathfinder, and you should see it. And I'm just going to unite all of these so you have a nice little heart. Now, I'm going to make this a symbol, but before I make it a symbol, I'm going to get it the color I want it to be when it is a symbol. So I'm going to do just a lighter gray, maybe a little bit lighter so we can see it a little bit better. That looks wonderful. So I'm gonna have this off to the side. And to make a new symbol, you'll want your symbol window up. So if you don't see that, go to your window, symbols. And there you go, it'll pop up. To make a new symbol, you'll have your artwork selected and you will go to this new symbol. It looks like a layer uh, graphic, but you'll just select that. And I'm gonna rename mine Heart. Ooh, Heart. I can type. Okay, and as you can see, it is popped up in my symbol window and it has this funny little plus sign going on. So that means it's part of the symbol sequence that's going on. Now I'm going to go over here and hold down. I had it on the symbol spinner tool, but your default is probably the symbol sprayer tool. And that is shift S. And then I'm just going to spray it. And great. That looks wonderful. That's just an easy way to repeat something that you've made that like multiple times. And then under here, you have a bunch of cool things that you can do with your symbol instance that you have. And so I wanna rotate mine a little bit. So I'm gonna to go to symbol spinner tool. And to use this, your symbol sequence has to be active. Like it has to have those boundary boxes around it for you to actually do stuff. And as you can see, when I click on the different instances, sorry, my Invisalign's in, so I'm kind of lisping a little bit. Um, you can see which ones are gonna be affected and rotated. And I'm just doing this so it looks, you know, a little different. But yeah, you can also go in and have some fun. There's a simple sizer tool, scruncher. This is just a fun thing to play in. So let's see what this is. That's gonna make things bigger. Whoop. There you go. So that is the background. I am going to lock that. So next we're gonna make our heart. So I made a new layer, renamed it heart. What I'm gonna do is pull up my line tool, which is right here. I'm going to change this so that it is a stroke. And I'm just going to make my line. And I want this stroke to be thicker. Well, let's just go and drop down and do 16. I want this stroke to be thicker. And then what I'm gonna do, cause I'm gonna blend this shape with another shape. So I'm just gonna duplicate this, bring it over here. And I want it so that the stroke gets thicker 
to thinner. So I'm going to make this stroke one. And I also want it to be a different color. So it's going to have a slight gradient to it. So I'm going to change that stroke color to it, like a darker gray. And then, actually, let's do a little bit darker than that. We'll do this one. Perfect. And, uh, you know, I'm changing my mind. I want that one to be like five so I can see it a little better. And then also what I'm going to do is I want this to start as a dotted line going to a straight full line. And so how you make a dotted line is you go to your stroke, you change your cap so that it's round, and then you're going to do dashed line. And as you can see, my dash is set to zero. But if it was set to like five, it would be more oblong, as you can see. So that's how you make a dotted line on a stroke, is you make your dash zero, you have a gap there so that you can separate it, and then your cap is round. And then this is straight, but I also want it to have a uh, rounded cap so that it goes to like um, oblong shapes instead of a butt cap that looks more just like a normal dotted line. Okay, so we've got our two lines. What I'm gonna do is go to my blend tool, I'm gonna double click on it, and it has specified steps set at six. I'm gonna have my specified steps set at 48. And so that means that there's gonna be 48 specified steps between this line and this line. So in total, there's gonna be 50 lines. So that's something to think about. I'm gonna click okay, and I'm gonna click on this guy. And then when this plus sign comes up, that means it's like, okay, that's what we're blending it to, right? And you're like, yes, that's correct. And so there you go. And this is really fun because if you select your other line and you have to use the direct selection tool after you've used, after you've used the blend tool so you can adjust it. Um, but you can do some fun things with the blend tool. You know, get some cool shapes going on. But I'm gonna undo, undo. So this is where our clipping mask will come into place in just one little second. So first, Let's make one more heart, and I'm gonna have my heart be a little off. It's gonna have one big heart. It's gonna have one big lumpy bit and a small lumpy bit on the other side. And then I'm gonna do my middle thing. I'm gonna come up here. We're gonna do our convert anchor point tool to kind of follow the curve over there and as you can see it's going up a little bit so I'll also get rid of these handles and so how clipping masks work I'm gonna actually bring this up Whoop. yes I like that more so how a clipping mask works is it will include anything that is white and delete anything that is black so I want to include my lines that are gonna be inside of the heart so I'm going to get rid of the stroke ah not orange no stroke and I'm going to make it all white and then I am going to unite these again and so what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring it over here and I'm gonna choose a little area of this that I like the most I kinda want more dotted lines and of course um, I can scale this down too to kinda get more cool information in there yeah and then I'll drag it down a little <clears throat> okay so what a clipping mask does is anything that is below it is what it will include. So say if I had this on top, it wouldn't work. It would delete from the heart all of this black information. But I want the white to be on front. Oops, I didn't select the right thing. I want the white heart to be on front so that everything underneath will be included. So you're going to select what you want included. You're going to go to Object, Clipping Mask, make and there you go I've got all of that uh, dotted line information that I want and I'm going to scale it down and let's see let's go to a line so I can get this nice and aligned perfect so there you go you got your heart with its cool pattern included I am going to lock that layer and then I'm going to do some text and you can do whatever shapes you want and you can write whatever you want I can't even remember what I wrote the last time I think it was hold up beautiful I am going to make this white and the text the typeface I'm using is called Amarillo and I got that off to font.com now it's kind of hard to read this you know this is the original one that's because I used the lighter gray so it was a little bit better to read so you know this one I did a little faster but that's okay 
And if you ever need to go into your clipping mask and make adjustments, you can click on the selection and you can go to object, clipping mask, release. And my white heart is um, has no information, but that's easy to fix. So like say I wanted to make this a little lighter. I would select it, go in here. There you go. Select this end to be a bit lighter. Yeah. That looks great. And then you can reapply your clipping mask. So it's not the end of the world once you make it. You can still do some stuff. So that is that. You learned very quickly how to make a symbol, how to use that symbol for the symbol sprayer tool. You learned how the blend tool works. You learned how to make a dotted line. You learned how to make a clipping mask. So many things that you learned. So if you do have any questions about anything specific, please leave those in the comments down below. I know this was quick. I'm trying to keep them quick and punchy. And, you know, always you can rewatch something if you didn't quite get it. But if you do have more questions on anything, please leave those in the comments down below. And if you would like to learn more tutorials with me, I upload those every Wednesday and you can subscribe to learn more. I look forward to seeing you next week as we work on some more Illustrator projects. Thanks for watching.